Amen. Let's give God praise in this house this morning. Come on. Happy Resurrection Sunday to each one of you. Can we just shout hallelujah in this house? Amen. The highest form of praise. Again, we welcome you to Cross Church. And uh, if this is your first time here, thank you uh, for choosing to share your Easter Sunday with us. Yes, let's give our first time guests a great big hand uh, this morning. How about our kids this morning? They did an amazing job. And uh, we're so grateful uh, for them. Uh, if this is your first time, I'm Pastor Vincent. They also call me. That's me, and so uh, I'm excited um, because it's Easter Sunday, amen, and again, every Sunday, every day is an opportunity to celebrate what uh, Jesus has done in our lives, but today, especially today, um, we get to uh, just go maybe just a little bit over in our celebration, and if you're like me, uh, as I thought about this week, I reflected on just a few years ago uh, when we could not come together and gather on Easter Sunday. And uh, we, we still made it work online, but, uh, um, you know, for so long, we had taken just the opportunity to gather for granted. And uh, there was a reminder to us uh, uh, two years ago that, uh, that, that that opportunity is so precious that when we can come together as believers in Jesus Christ in fellowship and in love and in celebration for what he has done for us. So I'm excited this year that, again, we're able to just be in the house uh, together uh, with one another. Um, uh, as I jump into our, our message for the day, one of the things about Easter for a pastor, there's really kind of uh, two things that, that goes along with uh, preparing an, an Easter message. One, um, from one standpoint, uh, Easter message is very easy, right? Um, you already know the story. Everybody already knows pretty much what you're going to, to preach about. You don't have to worry about trying to figure out, come up with a sermon, because you know on Easter Sunday, uh, you're going to talk about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. However, at the same time, uh, it can be very difficult um, because everybody knows and, and what you're going to preach about and because everybody uh, is expecting that you're going to talk about Easter, there is this pressure from us as pastors that we feel like that we have to come up with something unique and something out of the box and, and something maybe that you have never heard or, or seen in the Easter story. And friends, this morning, uh, as, as, as I thought about that and, and over the last few years, what I've come to the conclusion is this, that there's really no point in me trying to add or, or trying to do anything else. Jesus preached the Easter message on Easter Sunday morning. And, and today, what, what really our objective is, is to one, help us to remember uh, what happened, but also uh, to motivate us to celebrate it and to make a decision in how we're going to respond to it in our lives. So today, uh, our theme for this Easter season has been from thorns to glory, from thorns to to glory. And if you have your Bible, Hebrews chapter 2 is uh, what, what we're going to look at. Because today what we want to do is we want to celebrate Jesus Christ as our king. And he is, he is our king that came so many years ago um, and, and showed us how to live and walk this life. But he is today our king. So if you have your Bibles, uh, Hebrews chapter 2, we're going to look at verse 9 and verse 10. Um, and we're reading from the NLT. Uh, it also, you can find it on the screen as well. Um, if you have it and if you're ready, say, I am ready. And if you're not, say, I'm not. All right, we wait on you. We will wait on you. Hebrews is after 2 Timothy. Um, or actually, I'm sorry, it's after there's a book in, in between that. We got Titus and Philemon. They're not too long, so they get skipped over every now and then. But but Hebrews chapter 2, beginning with verse number 9, it says, What do we see? What we do see is Jesus, rather, who was for a little while was given a position a little lower than the angels. And because he suffered, everybody say suffered, suffered. death for us, he is now crowned with glory. Shout glory. glory. With glory and honor. And yes, by God's grace, Jesus tasted death for everyone. God, for whom and through whom everything was made, chose to bring many children into glory. And it was only right that he should make Jesus, 
through his suffering, a perfect leader fit to bring them into salvation. As every head is bowed, every eye is closed. Take this moment to prepare our hearts for what God has for us today. Repeat after me, Father, open my eyes that I might see. Open my ears that I might hear. Open my heart that I might receive. And open my mind that I might understand what you have for me today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. As we reflect and we celebrate Jesus as our king, we know that every king, every king has a crown. The one of the one of the the, the the chief identifiers of a king of of royalty is the fact that they wear a crown. A crown is simply just a symbol of their power, of their royalty, of their authority, and their position as a king. And friends, uh, those things. Uh, there, there was a saying uh, that that really came out of out of Shakespeare that says, "Heavy is the head that wears a crown." For, for, for the crown bears with it so much responsibility. So much responsibility goes when, when you are uh, the king. Because guess what? As the king, as the head, as the, as the one and only person in charge of everything, the old saying goes, the buck stops what? Here, right? And, and, and as we, we think about Jesus Christ as the king, the redemptive plan of God was that, that, that Jesus would come, that Jesus would would suffer, that Jesus would die, and that Jesus would rise again, and and that as king, he would, in essence, wear two crowns. Friends, as we think about our theme this morning, we think about the fact that that Jesus, on Friday, wore the crown of suffering, but on Sunday, he wore the crown of glory. And, 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 And we can't talk about, we can't talk about the resurrection without talking about the crucifixion, right? We, 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 can't, we can't forget, because sometimes it's very easy for us to forget the, the, resur- the, the crucifixion part because that's, you know, that's not pretty, right? Amen? We, he died, he suffered, you know, that, that's not the pretty part of the story. We sometimes like to only focus on the resurrection. He got up, but, but before he got up, he had to die and go down for all of us. And friends, really the, the crown of, of thorns is, is, is a symbol of the suffering of Jesus Christ. And simply as my first point is this, that Jesus suffered for us. Amen. That he suffered. He suffered for us. Look at what verse 9 says. It says, what do we see in Jesus? For a little while he was given a position a little lower than the angels. And because he suffered death for us. Here's the reality, that suffering was required to gain victory. He had to suffer first before he could become victorious. Any athletes in the house or want to be athletes, thought about being an athlete, right? Think of yourself as an athlete as you watch other athletes, right? You, you, if, 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 even if you haven't ever been an athlete, you've, you've paid attention enough to know as you've watched that, that, that to, in order to be an athlete, uh, before you go to the competition, there is training and preparation, right? Um, and anybody that's an athlete knows that that training and pre- preparation, there's a lot of suffering and pain in that, right? Uh, in, in, in my brief athletic career, I remember uh, the, the, those summers of two-a-days, right? As we, as we sweated out in the Texas heat and hitting each other, and this was back before they realized that it may not be good to have us out there in full pads in 105-degree weather. Amen. And, 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 and so, so uh, yeah, we, we made it through it, right? But there was suffering that had to take place before we could get to the part of being able to achieve victory. We all know the saying, no pain, no gain, right? Because you got to pay the price, what, to, to get the prize. And, and, and friends, the reality for all of us, when, when we think about the story of Jesus, if he had not died, we would have never experienced the victory. Get this. Not only was the suffering necessary, 
But friends, Jesus suffered for us. He didn't do it for him. Jesus was our substitute. Everybody say substitute. Now, when we think about substitutes, generally, we think about uh, taking a step down, right? Um, I, no offense to substitute anybody as a substitute teacher in here, amen? But, but typically, when the substitute teacher comes in, you, you're not the regular teacher, right? So, so the expectation from you, from the kids, is that we're not going to do anything because you don't know what we're supposed to do. Right. Right. I mean, let's just be honest. I, I've said before. Right. Um, that substitutes generally means that it's a it's a step down. Even if it, even if we look in the, the scenario of sports and, and basketball, when the when the star player goes out and they send in the substitute. Right. Right. We're not cheering for them. We're trying to figure out why the star isn't staying in the game. <laughs> right. And, and, and depending on who that sub is, we're like, oh, there we go. We're going we're going to lose this lead. Right. We're going to lose this lead, right? We generally don't see substitutes as a positive thing. But get this with Jesus. Jesus was our substitute, but Jesus was an upgrade. He, 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 was a, he was an upgrade for he who was without sin took the place of us who were with sin, and he took our place not because he had to, not because he needed to, but because he wanted to out of his love, because he wanted to redeem us, and he wanted to reconnect us back to God. He's our substitute. What do Romans 5 and 8 says? For, for while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Friends, I, I don't know of any, any wrestling fans in here. Like, I mean, like fake wrestling, WWE, right? Okay, I'm by myself. Uh, y'all don't want to admit it, right? I know y'all watched WrestleMania a couple weeks ago. Amen. I, I, I love watching wrestling. I've watched it my whole entire life. Um, I know it's fake, but it's entertaining. Amen. It's entertaining. And, 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 and in tag team matches, right, you, you have two guys that are on, on the team. They're fighting, competing with one another. And at, at some point in the match, uh, one particular person on the team is, is, is suffering. He's getting beat up. He's getting, he's getting pummeled. He, he's trying to get back to his corner because he has somebody in the corner that is fresh and that is renewed and is ready to fight because he can't fight any longer, right? And you see that tug and that, that tussle between as he's trying to get back, but yet, but yet his opponent keeps pulling him back and won't let him make that tag. But yet the victory comes when, when he can finally make that tag and his partner can come in. And he begins to pick up that fight. Friends, don't you know, Satan was our enemy that was wrestling with us, that he's been trying to hold us and pull us back. And we've been trying to get to tag Jesus because we knew that when Jesus got in the match, not only was he going to fight, but he was going to win the victory. And, and, and that's what happened on Calvary's cross, that, that, that Jesus took our place in the fight, that Jesus stepped in. And guess what? We didn't have to get back in the fight because this is my second point, that he won it for us. He won it for us. He didn't just suffer, but he won the victory for us. Friends, look at what Matthew, we have to read the story, right? Matthew, Matthew 28, Matthew 28, 1 through 6 says this. Early on Sunday morning, as the new day was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went out to visit the tomb. Suddenly there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled aside the stone, and sat on it. His face shone with lightning, and his clothes were as white as snow. The guards shook with fear when they saw him, and they fell into a dead faint. That's a faint right there, amen, a dead faint, amen, amen, a dead faint. And verse 5 says, then the angel spoke to the women, don't be afraid, he said. I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified, but he isn't here. He has risen from the dead, just as he said would happen. Come see where his body was laying. Paul says it like this in 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 3. He says, I pass on to you what was most important and what has also been passed to me, that Christ died for our sins, just as the scripture said. He was buried and was raised from death on the third day, just as the scripture said. Jump down to verse 55. He says, but... O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? For sin is the sting that results in death, and the law gives sin its power. But verse 57 says, But thank God he gives us victory over sin and death through our Lord Jesus Christ. 
resurrection gave us, gave us victory over the power of death in our lives, gave us, gave us victory over sin's control over our lives, gave us victory over Satan's reign in all of our lives. You know, I like to watch a lot of kind of medieval, I like sword fighting kind of movies, right? I just, I just, I'm just, I, y'all like, man, he's weird. He likes wrestling and sword fighting. I like all those medieval time kind of movies, right? Um, I'm a warrior. That's right. I'm a warrior. I'm a warrior. I'm a warrior for Jesus. Amen. Um, so I like watching those movies. But, but it, you know, sometimes when you see two warring countries fight uh, uh, with one another, and we see this actually in the Bible itself, that, that what will happen is, is that the, the, instead of them going to battle, uh, each side will, will choose a champion. Remember the story of David and Goliath, right? Uh, uh, the Philistines sent Goliath their champion, and, and he, he basically, uh, he basically uh, put out a, a challenge to send their champion to fight. And basically, as the champions fought, whoever won, that would decide who won the battle, right? And, and, and so you, you see the two champions would enter the ring, right? And, and sometimes, sometimes uh, the kingdom didn't have a, a, a true Goliath, a true champion. And in those instances, everybody looked to the king. Right. Because the, the, the king was the most powerful, the most the strongest. And sometimes the king had to enter into the fight himself on behalf of his kingdom. And so you see in these these battles where the king and these champions come together and they fight and they suffer and, and, and they and they struggle. And, and, and eventually one wins the battle and he comes victorious. And guess what? He wins on behalf of his people. Friends, I want you to know that Jesus is your champion. He's your, he's your champion. He stepped into the ring on our behalf. He, he took our place, and he took on the fight against death. And the Bible says not only did he fight it, but he won. And the Bible says that now God has given him a new crown. He can take off the crown of suffering, but now God has given him the crown of glory. Amen. Philippians 2 says it like this. It says, Therefore, God elevated him to a place of high honor and gave him a name above all names. And that is at the name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess, declaring that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God our Father. We sing a song entitled, He's Our Champion. The verse says, He is our champion. We lift our hands. We lift our voices. We celebrate our champion. We sing hallelujah for the king who reigns victorious. Friends, because of him, we are victorious. Not just over death, but over sin, over all the obstacles that are standing in our lives. We, we, We not only are victorious, but because of him, we are overcomers. Because he overcame it all. Because he overcame, we can overcome. But because of him, uh, there, there is nothing that is impossible for us through him because he has done it all. And, and all we have to do is rely and believe and trust in him. And, and the Bible says that we can do all things, not of our own strength, but because of the strength of our champions. Amen. Friends, he suffered for us. He won for us. But get this. He shared the glory with us. He shared the glory with us. It could have been easy for Jesus to take all the credit for himself. Could have been easy to, for him to go back to heaven and say, look at what I did. Uh, I did that. You know what, Jesus? I, God, I know I went down there for them, but they didn't do anything. Amen. That's kind of how we are, right? You know, you're working in on group projects and, and the, the accolades start coming out. And, and, you know, you got that person on your team that didn't do anything. You're like, you didn't do anything. And they're like, oh, yeah, we did it, man. We, no, you didn't do anything. <laughs> you didn't come to one meeting. You didn't, you didn't look up one thing, right? Um, and, and that's kind of the position we were in. But, but Jesus, he shared the glory with us. Look at what verse 10 says. God for whom and through whom everything was made chose to bring many children into glory. Guess who the children are? He said, to bring many children in the, into glory, and it was only right that he should make Jesus, through his suffering, the perfect leader 
to bring them into salvation. Friends, get this. We're the beneficiaries. We, we know you got an insurance policy. Amen. If you don't, please think about getting one. Amen. <laughs> Amen. If you can, never too, never too young. Amen. On any uh, insurance, anything like that, they ask, who, who's your beneficiary? Beneficiary is the one who, who is the one that gains something or uh, possessions or, or whatever it is that, that you have, have deemed for them to get in case, right, something happens to you. And friends, we are Jesus' beneficiaries. Jesus suffered and died. Jesus rose for the victory. But guess what? Guess who, who got the reward? It's us. We, we, we are the beneficiaries of the glory of Jesus Christ. John 1, 12 says, but to all who believe him and accept him, he gave the right to become the children of God. Get this, verse 13. They are reborn, not with a physical birth, resulting from human passion or plan, but a birth that comes from God. He suffered for us. He won for us. But he shares with us the glory. He did it all for us. Friends, this is what I want you to think about this Easter. Question is this, how will you respond? How will you respond this Easter? How will you respond to the fact that he took your place on Calvary's cross? That he was your son? How will you respond to the fact that that, that he won the victory, right? And, and, and not only did he w- we win it, but he didn't win it for him, but he, he won it for you. How will you respond to the fact that that he shares that glory and that opportunity to have eternal life and be known as a child of God? How will you respond? In in the Psalms, Psalms 116, the psalmist writes this. He says, I will, I will lift up the cup of salvation and I will praise the Lord's name for saving me. He says, I will keep my promises to the Lord in the presence of all of his people. The Lord cares deeply when his loved ones die. Oh, oh Lord, I am your servant born into the house, your household. You have freed me from my chains. I will offer you a a, a sacrifice of thanksgiving, and I will call on the name of the Lord. I will will fulfill my vow to the Lord in the presence of all of his people, in the house of the Lord, in the heart of Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. How will you respond? Will you respond by receiving the salvation for which he suffered and died for you for? Will you respond today by by praising God for the fact that he saved you, that he found you lost in your sin, and that he saved you out of sin and brought you into a new life? Will, Will you respond by keeping all of those promises, you know the promises we made to God, right? You remember when things weren't going our way and we was asking and praying for a bailout? And we said, God, if you bail me out, I, I, I'll be at church every Sunday. God, if you bail me out, I'll pay my tithes. God, if you bail me out, if you get me out of this one, God, I'll never go back. I'll never do that again. Will we keep our promises to him? Will we respond by by loving those around us as he calls and he says that the commandments are wrapped up in this love God would all and love your neighbor as yourself. Will we respond by simply surrendering our lives wholly and completely to him and serving him as he has called us to? 
in whatever capacity as we saw when Jesus served his disciples so much that he said that I will be willing to wash your feet. That's an example because I did not come to be served. I came to serve. Will that be our response? Will we respond today by simply being thankful? Being thankful for what he did for me. Not just on Calvary, not just on Resurrection Sunday, but what he's done for me from birth to this point in time in my life. All the things that he has brought me through, all the times he has delivered me, all the times that he made a way for me when I couldn't possibly see a way. All of the times when when he was protecting me in my foolishness. Come on, somebody. Will my response today just be, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise team can come. Friends, today is simply a day to reflect, to celebrate, to respond. Don't simply just reflect on what he did and forget to celebrate it. And forget to respond. Don't just simply celebrate. Praise God. Thank you. Praise God. And, and leave this place without making a response to it. Because he didn't do it just to get us out of sin. He did it because he wants a relationship with you. He, he, he wants you to experience and receive and live out the abundant life that he came to give to each one of us. So, as we stand on our feet, and as we prepare to go into this time of decision, I want you to think about what will your response be. And, 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 And I want you today to move by the Spirit of God. And whatever he has put on your heart in which you feel that you need to respond, don't leave this place. Don't let this moment go by without responding to him. Today might be your day that your response is, I give my life. I know the story. I've heard the story a million times, but, but, but I haven't truly given my life to Jesus. Today is your day to respond that way maybe you're saying I've given my life but I have not I have not surrendered my all to him I am not serving him like I should today is the day that that you should respond and say God I surrender it all I've tried to do in my way it has not worked for me I give you the control of my life maybe your response is simply to praise and thank him but friends as we take this time It's not about who's around you. It's not about who's looking. But it's about you and him and how you choose to respond to what he has done for you in this moment. So as you think, as you reflect, we'll have those that will be down here to receive and pray if you need that. But make a response. Let's not make this just another Easter where we come. We gather, we get all dressed up, we look good, and then we go back into life as it's been before. Today is your day. He's calling you. Come to me. All you that are burdened and heavy laden, all you that are struggling and hurting, all you that that are distant but want to get closer, come back to me. I am here for you I want to love you I want to receive you I want to care for you let's praise him sings let us respond to him